just by chance I picked up a book last year called The Solar Century by Jeremy Leggett and it clearly describes the potential of solar energy. If you look at the opinion polls around the world, it's really clear solar energy is outstandingly the most popular energy technology of any kind in multiple countries. And that's really encouraging because it, for those of us who believe that there is a solar revolution coming, if we can just take that innate attractiveness that the technology has to people and um, grow the markets in a sustainable way, then we can really bring a lot of good to the world. momentum is increasing quite considerably. Mm. If you get sort of five or six installations like that yeah. um, done by community leaders of different sort of types, yes, yes. then that's much the, better the than ones just having and the one. other businesses yeah. and uh, obviously we've got about 15 odd other domestic ones done now that, that are part of Ren, others that mm. aren't. Jeremy. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Nice. Nice to meet you. Hi, Lynette. Nice to meet you. Meet you. Nice roof. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, the washing machines. I've just put the washing machine on as so it's going backwards quite slowly. But it's still going backwards? Yeah, That's even with the washing machine on. Amazing. It's kicking out 3,300 at the moment. Which is good, is isn't that it? right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. 3.76. Yeah. I think if you look at the problems we have with conventional energy, the, the costs are going up all the time. There are big energy security issues, there are climate change issues. We have to go to alternatives, and those alternatives are going to be renewable energy and energy efficiency. And solar energy, without being a magic bullet, is, I think, a really important part of that future energy family. And that's why we have to make the 21st century the solar century. Another reason is the developing world really doesn't have much choice. Solar energy is the energy technology that can bring them development the energy technologies we've used can't. Oh, yeah. Very good. How are you? Very good. Yeah. Well, good to yeah. Good to see you. 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 One reason why we had over 600 people in our town hall mm. was that we were expressing things which are positive and attractive, particularly the economic benefits. Yes. And people who see all the things we're talking about see it anyway, you don't need to explain it to them. Just that idea of autonomy and, and, um, and protection from personal economic threats. If we're going to extend anything of what we're doing here more widely, I think it's those sorts of things to make it seem easy and attractive, individually and communally yes. beneficial. And, uh, and I think that could have a real role. Yeah, and it does feel a bit like a civil war, I have to say. Mm. Well, it is. One of the obvious things about solar is it's an energy technology that gives you energy right where you need it. There are no moving parts. You can put it on your roof. You can turn your home into a power plant. You can turn your, your company offices or factory into a standalone power plant. It, this is a very powerful thing, and it, it literally empowers communities. So I think this plus the other renewable technologies are really going to resonate in communities as we go forward, and that's why projects like REN are so exciting because this is pioneering work for something that I believe is just going to become really common, indeed has to become really common. Hello, nice to see you. Good to meet you. You're on a little tour of the West Coast. Yes, I am. <laughs> and enjoying it very much. Yeah, and Harry, well, I've seen your picture in the paper. My name is Andrew Hawkey and my family have farmed here for four generations. It's been a long slog, it was a year ago, like I said in the film at Royal Cornwall Show, Andy was the first person we met in the tent, 
uh, when we stepped inside the door and quite ironic really after another year that um, he was the man that became the sort of overall responsibility. It's involved 5,000 metres of cable 1,000 modules, two kilometres of aluminium, one very involved family uh, getting involved in it, and the overall outcome is what you'll be seeing in a minute. What inspires me the most about solar and the other forms of clean energy technology is that it's not just about the electricity and the heating, it's, it's about the value you bring to communities, to society, by being able to turn your own building, or your own town, your own country, into a standalone energy independent entity. All kinds of good comes from that. I was asked to talk about the national context of um, a project like this because there's this famous adage, act local, think global. Improved air quality, dealing with climate change, not having to go to the Middle East to fight wars for oil, on and on and on. And, and this really, for me, is what makes these kinds of projects, uh, the, the REN project, so important because they're carrying a banner into what I see as a bit of a civil war in the energy industry, which, which is vital for society that we ultimately win. In the national context, for those of us who work on the front lines of all this, as I do at Silver Century, it's just such an exciting time. Those of us who are advocates of all this look at a project like this and think, you know, we really can see the future. So follow Oliver, we'll go straight up in the field and we'll have a picture first, uh, then the photographer can make on his way. Copy what's going on around you in, in places like Wade Bridge. Look at the models you like best and look at what people are doing. Go visit the installations like the ones I've seen today and, and see how easy it is to do. And you will wind up saving money for your communities, empowering your communities, uh, in many cases bringing jobs to your communities and a whole list of other benefits.